Hi. I'm going to cut to the chase. It's not Halloween anymore, and for obvious reasons, I haven't been able to take down the decorations. Now, I could spend an hour telling you a long-winded story as to why I'm in this condition. However, I think this brief security camera clip would get the job done faster. I also haven't been able to clean the mark off the wall. So, I guess... In the Halloween spirit, I could tell you the scary story that led to this. TVs! Boxes that show funny little pictures. They bring us joy, they bring us pain, they bring us entertainment. Mostly pain. They come in all shapes and sizes. Thin, really thin, not so thin. I'm a fan of the latter variety, personally. Look at this boy! Pioneers used to ride these babies for miles. Ah, uh, yes, of course I'm talking about the CRT, or cathode ray tube. This used to be the main type of technology used for TVs and monitors of all kinds up until about the turn of the millennium. Now, I'm no scientist, and there are plenty of people on the internet who have talked about CRTs and how they work already, so I'm not going to regurgitate information about something I know very little about. Instead, watch these smart people talk about it. To put it simply, CRTs are oddly shaped glass tubes hooked up to this thing called an electron gun which uses high voltage electricity and shoots a bunch of dots across the front of the screen to make a picture. Now I recently received one of these funny little tubes and proceeded to screw it up. Let's rewind a little. So a friend of mine was getting rid of this JVC Master Command TV and I was so kind as to take it off his hands. We met up at the local game exchange that was going on that weekend and did a little browsing and shopping and I got myself on a little bit of a retro tech and gaming kick. I quickly decided to do a little research on the possible mods that I could do on this TV to make it a little more fun. That's where the RGB Mux mod comes in. Once again, there are plenty of smarter people who can explain this, but to sum it up, a lot of consumer television sets can be modded to accept an RGB signal. The benefits of this being an overall clearer picture. Most of these consumer sets also have an on-screen display for settings. Oftentimes, this display happens to output an RGB signal directly to the tube. The idea behind the RGB Mux mod is that you just splice an RGB signal between the chip for the on-screen display and the video processing chip, or jungle chip, to get that signal to show up on the screen. Now, this set only has an RF input, which had a surprisingly decent picture already, to be honest. I've just been using it with a VCR to get anything with a composite output into it. I figured it'd be a good idea to maybe add some more common and modern inputs and get a little bit of a quality boost while I'm at it. You'll soon see that this was probably a poor decision on my part. Now, I may have mentioned it before, but I am a bit of a tinkerer, for better or worse. But this set was actually my first time working on a CRT. And if you're like me and are afraid of everything, the experience might be a little nerve-wracking to say the least. See, the funny thing about CRTs is that they can kill you. Like, there are multiple elements within this big gray box that can murder you. To death. So obviously I was a little tense working on it. My plan was to carefully poke around to see if I could identify what was where and where I could patch in my RGB inputs. There's almost no information that I could find about this TV online, so I just wanted to make sure that whatever I was planning on doing was even possible before I went and did anything too crazy. Besides my comical attempts at electrical engineering, I'm not actually going to focus on the RGB mod all that much because I didn't actually do it. I realized pretty soon that I don't actually have anything that outputs RGB signals. Probably should have checked that before I started picking away at high voltage electronics, but I didn't. So instead of leaving the set as is, I just couldn't keep my grubby little hands away from the thing and decided to try and patch in a composite input instead. You know, eliminate the middleman that is my old Sears VCR. This proved to be even more difficult. As I said earlier, there is literally no information on this TV. I couldn't find a service manual or a user manual. I trekked through the Reddit wastelands to see if there was even one person who had been inside this TV before, and sure enough, there was no one. I was on my own for this one. Kind of. Now, the source of almost all the information I found on modding consumer CRTs is from the Shmups forum on System11.org. And luckily, I was able to find someone else who had posted about modding a composite input onto a different TV that happened to have the same RF demodulator chip in it as mine. This is the chip that converts the RF signal from a radio frequency back into a composite signal that can then be processed by the jungle chip. 
After finding some schematics for this chip and checking them against these forum posts, I was able to find out what pins were outputting the composite signal. Theoretically, this meant I could just lift that pin and patch in there. Easy, right? <laughs> it would be if I wasn't incompetent. Yeah, I don't know what I did to this chip, but it did not do it any favors. I broke a pin off and had to bodge a piece of wire back in to fix it, screwed up the solder mask on the back of the board, so the connection most definitely isn't as strong as it should be. And after all that, it's still no luck. I was able to get a picture on the screen from a composite input, but it was kind of screwed up and completely threw the sink off when there was more than a few objects on screen at a time. I decided to cut my losses and just put everything back to normal. And guess what? <laughs> I f***ed it up even more. <laughs> Another thing about CRTs is that they really do not like magnetic fields. This was actually one of the few things that I was already aware of before going into this project, and I still made the rookie mistake of all rookie mistakes. I put the TV next to an unshielded speaker when I was putting it back together. This resulted in something called a purity error, meaning that the colors were all wonky because the magnets in the speaker threw off the field within the tube, causing the electrons to get all screwed up and go the wrong ways. The way to fix this is to reset the magnetic field around the set using a degaussing coil. So the way it works is this. You turn it on and you move it quite close to the monitor. And you can see some patterns are forming here already. And slowly, slowly, surely, you move it backwards. Just a little bit at a time, just a little step at a time. And eventually, if you move it back far enough, you will get to the point where you can turn off the degaussing coil. And miracle of miracles, you've got a fixed television set. You've got rid of the purity error. Now usually, this purity thing would be a non-issue. Most CRTs have a built-in degaussing coil that fixes the screen when the TV turns on. I figured that the problem was just that the speaker screwed up the screen beyond what the built-in coil could fix. So I was left with a few options. One, find an external degaussing coil. Two, actually that's it, that, just the degaussing coil. So I need to find someone who had an external degausser I could use, and after days of searching, I finally found a TV repair place near me that I was able to bring the set to. So that's it, right? Just get it degaussed and all would be well again? It might have been that easy if the universe didn't decide to torment me at every waking moment. Fun fact about this TV, it's 32 years old. And that means that the circuit that actually powers the built-in degaussing coil just died of old age. See, the main thing that turns this degaussing circuit on and off is called a thermistor. It's a type of resistor that relies on temperature to make it work. When high voltage passes through it like what's in a TV, it gets hot, and the resistance changes and turns the circuit off. Because this TV is so old though, the multiple hot and cold cycles on the circuit just kinda killed the solder joints. Luckily the repair shop caught this issue and was able to fix it, as this repair was a little out of my area of expertise. Could you tell? So, I left it with the shop, and a day later I brought it home and all was well. All was not well. I can't catch a fucking break. Yeah, so while my purity issues were now gone, my colors were still a little weird. Mainly a little dim. This meant it was time for calibration. Yes, that's right. I had to open it up again and put myself at the perils of magic wall lightning. But this time, I had to do it while it was on. That's right. Audience members with a weak heart, please avert your eyes as I poke around various potentiometers with high voltage passing by mere inches from my leather gloves. Okay, it wasn't that bad, I just had to take proper safety precautions into consideration. I'll link to a good video about the basics of safety when working on a CRT in case you are braver than I and want to do it yourself. But yeah, I basically had to rebalance the colors and brightness of the tube. I did this with a helpful little app called the 240p Test Suite. Link in the description. I ran it off of my Dreamcast, but it's available on a good few consoles, including more modern ones like the Wii. Can you still call the Wii modern? Uh, I don't care. Basically, you use this color bar test to set the brightness of each color channel until everything lines up right. More detailed instructions can be found on the CRT database, link in the description again. And it varies depending on the set, but usually they're adjusted with potentiometers that are found somewhere inside the unit. Sometimes they're even available in an on-screen service menu for easier access on the higher end sets. One thing to note is that the calibration should be done in complete darkness, as your eyes won't be able to get proper reading of the brightness otherwise. Also be mindful of the flyback transformer. The overall screen brightness is often controlled through a pod on here, but this thing carries very high voltage, so, you know, just be mindful as to not die. Finally, after all that, I now have a properly calibrated CRT that I can use to my heart's content. Just has to be through the use of a bulky VCR.
I also received several broken bones after being blasted towards the shop wall at high velocity after touching the flyback transformer in a way it deemed unsatisfactory. So yeah, I probably won't be busting this thing open again anytime soon. It'd be nice to hook things up to it directly, but I don't mind having to use a VCR or an external RF modulator for now. Maybe I'll revisit an RGB mod one day, as I know it's at least semi-possible, but until then, I'm happy with what I got. Sib, how many times do I have to tell you to take down the Halloween decorations? I'm not paying you to sit around. Sir, I, I can't walk. No excuses. November's almost over now. Christmas decorations need to go up as soon as possible. Get to work and make it snappy! I hate this song. <laughs>